Hey everyone, it's Monica. Welcome back to Homeschool Voices. Today I'm going to tell you about what we use to teach logic in the elementary and middle school age groups. There are four books that we have used so far to teach logic. Starting in order, we have The Fallacy Detective, The Thinking Toolbox, An Illustrated Book of Bad Arguments, The Art of Argument. What all of these books have in common is that they discuss logical fallacies or informal fallacies. And if you don't know what they are, don't feel bad because you probably went to public schools in the United States too and you didn't learn a thing about it. So I would suggest that you learn about it because when you start to learn a little bit, you realize it's pretty important. Here's an example of a logical fallacy. Do you know what an ad hominem attack is or an ad hominem logical fallacy is? Have you ever heard of that? No? It's time to learn. You can learn along with your kid. Get one of these books and learn all about it. And after you learn about logical fallacies, well, there's more to learn like formal logic. I don't know because I didn't learn it, but I know that there's more to learn. So just start here, okay? So I'm just gonna go through each book, flip through so you can see what's in them. The Fallacy Detective is a great starter book. It, here's the table of context. The Inquiring Mind, Avoiding the Question. So these are different types of fallacies where you avoid the question. Red herring, ad hominem, genetic fallacy, two quoque, uh, faulty appeal to authority, appeal to the people, straw man. These are all things, by the way, that you see a lot in politics. People use these sort of fallacies intentionally as a form of rhetoric. So they're very important to be able to recognize. So when you hear people saying it, you realize that they're not really trying to appeal to your logic. They're just trying to manipulate you. Making assumptions. Um, part to whole, hold apart, equivocations, statistical fallacies, a hasty generalization, very common, a weak analogy, proof by lack of evidence. Oh, and propaganda, it's our favorite. Appeal to fear, appeal to pity, appeal to fear. That would be a big one. That would be a big one. It's used constantly. Bandwagon, that's another big one. Repetition, say it enough, people believe it. Oh, well, let's just do red herring. So I just wanted you to see how short and easy they are. So you just start here, gives you, gives you an example right from the beginning. And then another example, example B. Okay, we're only on page three of this little section. And this is not a red herring. They usually give you a fun little comic strip. strip. And then you have exercises, and then there's answers in the back. That's what each chapter is like. Very short and sweet, very easy, and dare I say, a little entertaining. The Thinking Toolbox is the next in the series of The Fallacy Detective, and it's not really um, logical fallacies, it's more just reasoning. So here, let's just look at the table of contents. Um, a discussion, a disagreement, an argument, and a fight, like just to know the difference. When is it dumb to argue? Fact, inference, or opinion? You get the idea. Tools for opposing viewpoints, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly evidence. So teaching kids to kind of recognize good and bad evidence. Who has a reason to lie? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, mystery of the stolen. You should know that there is a religious element to these. If that bothers you, I guess you won't like these, but it's not a major thing. But they do occasionally quote from uh, parts of the Bible. I think mostly Psalms, but I'm not sure. How to prove you're wrong, a good experiment. There we go. Let's just quickly look. And just like the other books, very short and sweet chapters. Less than two, a discussion, a disagreement, an argument, or a fight. Starts out right from the beginning with examples, cute little drawings. Just, it's just basically chock full of examples with little scripts, you know, like that. And some exercises to help see if you understood what they were talking about. Bad Arguments is another book with logical fallacies. So it's very cute, actually, very funny little drawings. So contents, logical fallacies, 
argument from consequences straw man appeal to irrelevant authority so it's nice to kind of learn these things with a slightly different explanation so you can learn to understand things in a different way oh like different types of red herrings logical fallacies oh, that was a very cool little chart these are very short and sweet you'll basically this is it argument from consequences it's the, these two pages right here super short and sweet straw man there you go that gives you an idea of what this book is about there you are last but not least is the art of argument an introduction to the informal fallacies more but this is just for a slightly older kid it's more middle school age I would say because um, it's just more wordy let's argue shall we look at the table of contents actually you know ad hominem to quoquet um, appeals to fear appeals to pity snob appeal mob appeal so you know Let's look at everything, shall we? There you are. Okay. Fight fair, how to make an argument without starting an argument. So, and it just, it has more, you, you know, you're supposed to engage more with the material. I mean, the, um, the first one that I showed you does have you engaging, but you know, in this one, you're actually supposed to write your answers. And it's just more wordy. Critical thinking as a way of life. I'll just flip through it very quickly. Formal versus informal logic. Kind of a little script here with an example. <laughs> Dialogue on winning an argument sort of while losing a friend. I'll just quickly flip through. Arguments against the source. Ad fontem, I don't even know that one. Ad hominem abusive. Ad hominem circumstantial. So again, it's similar stuff to what um, my son has learned in the other two books that dealt with informal fallacies, but it's just, it's a little bit of a different take and some more detail, I would say, and different kinds of examples. So the more the more that you learn and the different sources that you use is always a good thing. Same with history. You don't want to read one textbook. You want to read all kinds of different things, right? Cool. There you have it. I hope that that's helpful. There you have it. I hope that was helpful. That's what we've used so far. We've just done informal fallacies. If you have any questions, please tell me in the comments below. I would love to hear what you have to say. And if you like this video, please click thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please click subscribe and the notification bell next to it. In the meantime, happy homeschooling and have a great day.